So I'm with Javier Mendez from the Isaac Newton Group of Telescopes and he's going to show me inside the dome of the William Herschel Telescope. This is the biggest one in the group. Let's do it. It's the single telescope which I've definitely used the most in, in my career. Uh, typically I observe there at least once, maybe even twice a year, so I'm spending you know, a week or so there a year. I used to be uh, one of the uh, managers of the telescope there. I used to work there early 90s, actually when it was first built. A uh, very exciting time actually because it was a new telescope. It was the third biggest in the world at the time, in the early 90s, but it was by far the most modern. The, the two that were bigger than it were in the America and Russia and they were quite old telescopes. When things are going well, it's my favourite telescope in the world. When it's not, then I, I curse it to the high heavens. The instrumentation was fantastic. All the world's astronomers were coming out all the time to La Palma to use it. It was real buzz about the place. This telescope actually has a, a, a Guinness record for being the biggest telescope in, in Europe. It's, it was the biggest telescope in, Euro, in, in Europe until the Grand Tecan was constructed. Here we are. This is a seriously big telescope. It has a 4.2 metre mirror. The dome is immense. I guess I've got inured to it because I've been there so many times that I, and actually I've visited bigger telescopes now that actually it seems, you know, when I go and see it these days, it seems quite small, but, uh, but it really, you know, it, it is an impressive structure, it really is. Light will come in, it will go through the ring there and down to the primary mirror, which is encased in there. It'll bounce up to the secondary mirror up there, and then it comes down, and then it's science time down here. And this is a really excellent view of all the different instruments that they have bolted onto the telescope. They all do different things. They can all study light in different ways. They can just turn that around depending on what they want to study, what they want to look at. I have no idea what half of them do. It's now become a test bed for new instrumentation. As we uh, develop new instrumentation, um, we need telescopes where we can test that out. You don't want to put it on the very biggest telescopes in the world. The time is just too precious on, on that to test out new ideas with instruments. A telescope like the William Herschel is by no means a tiddler. You know, it's a big telescope. It's uh, perfect for, for, for when you have a, a specific project which you built a specific instrument for that you want to try out on the telescope. It's, it's really good for that. Okay, now we're gonna go up the stairs and get a better look. So we're up a bit higher now. There's the instruments, there's the mirror. So it's, it's now what's called a small or medium sized telescope because I mean at the time it was made I think it was the second or third largest telescope in the world. 4.2 meters in diameter at the time that was a big telescope but of course now there are 8 meter and 10 meter telescopes and plans for even bigger telescopes so now it's what's called a medium sized telescope. So the way the telescopes work is they move from being these sort of cutting edge instruments to becoming much more sort of workhorse things and so now the WHT is very much a, a kind of workhorse instrument rather than something that's really there at the cutting edge. So now Javier is taking me around getting a slightly better view. We're above the mirror now, you can see down into it, and you can see those white petals covering the mirror, protecting it. Later on tonight they'll open up and expose the mirror. When I was there in the early days we were commissioning instruments, new instruments all the time. These were common user instruments, big ones that were for the entire nation's use. But sometimes we had uh, technical problems with, with, with them and it meant that the, maybe the last hour of the night was was uh, useless because the instrument was no longer working, the engineers were going to be up in an hour or two. So we'd run up to the, um, one of the foci uh, on the telescope where there was an eyepiece and so and we would, for the last half hour, it was in twilight, we would point the telescope at Mars, at Jupiter, the Moon and, and look at these just fantastic, you can't do it anymore, the, the eyepiece is gone. To, to look at a uh, solar system object is, would be seen as a, as, a, as a real unnecessary luxury. The time on these telescopes is so competitive. Every night that you want on a telescope you have to apply for. Uh, it's typically four to one oversubscribed. And so the, the observations you're making have got to be scientifically productive and ideally result in some advance in knowledge. And obviously myself looking at Mars in, 
<laughs> with my eye is not going to advance science one one iota. Mars was amazing. I remember seeing that, and it it, it looked like these fantastic uh, pictures that you see. Uh, uh, which have been heavily computer processed, uh, you know, to very carefully selected images going into the kind of coad. It was almost instantly available to my eye uh, uh, like that. I'll never forget the Mars. It, it, it was lovely, yeah. So here again is why we've got such a versatile telescope here. The light can come in, hit that primary mirror, bounce up to the secondary mirror, down to the baffle, and then there are two things that can happen. The light can keep going to that suite of instruments down the bottom, or a tertiary mirror can divert the light to the sides where there's even more instruments. So this becomes a real Swiss army knife. There are so many different instruments you can attach in so many different places, all using that same light that's come down from the heavens. It just depends what you want to do with your photons. You know, if you want to take a picture, then you just need a camera. If you want to split that light up into a spectrum and see the, you know, the, the different colors and the what have you that the, the object produces, then you need a spectrograph. You need a grating and things or a prism to split the light up. And so different bits of science really need different instruments. And one of the nice things about the William Herschel telescope is it's got a quite a number of focal stations, which means you can have a lot of instruments bolted onto the telescope at the same time. So when you want to change over from doing one kind of science to another, you don't have to go through all the rigmarole of taking one instrument off and putting another instrument on. Typically there are several instruments on at the same time, so quite likely you can just switch by sort of moving a mirror or something within the telescope, which just sends the light in a different direction to a different instrument. An exciting time for any telescope is when it sees its first light. First light for this telescope, June 1987. It actually accepts things called visitor instruments, that you can actually take your own instrument along with you and stick it on the back of the telescope and do your own science. Um, so I've been involved with a project for a number of years now, I think called the Planetary Nebula Spectrograph, where we basically built this instrument ourselves and, and you know, a couple of times a year we stick it on the back of the telescope and get to use our own instrumentation rather than just the instrumentation that the observatory provides. So we're inside the dome and this dome can rotate during the night so that the, the shutter over there can be pointing in the right place. The telescope can obviously move in this direction, but also down there you can see that, that disc, the azimuth, this part here, this can turn around as well, this rotates, and that lets the telescope look at all parts of the sky. But see the walkway next to it, the walkway next door there, that doesn't move, but also that's not attached in any way to the telescope. The telescope's completely independent so it can keep completely still during the night, not be affected by the building itself. Javier tells me we're coming up to 25 years. Are you planning the 25 year anniversary? What's the celebration? Uh, we're still thinking about the celebration. Uh, uh, there might be some surprises, I don't know. A surprise? Are you yes. going to invite me to the celebration? Sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you will. <laughs> it's named after William Herschel. <laughs> <laughs> Which is who? William Herschel was one of the founding fathers um, of astronomy. Despite his not very English sounding name, he actually spent most of his career uh, working in, in Bath, actually, in, in England. And he's actually one of the people who produced some of the first catalogues of galaxies and other nebulae. So he was really sort of followed on from Messier, who produced this absolute first catalogue of, of fuzzy things in the sky. So as Messier, in this first ever catalogue, ended up with a hundred odd objects of, of all sorts of different bits and pieces. William Herschel went about it in a rather more systematic way, tended to focus on star clusters and galaxies, and ended up with a catalogue that was closer to 10,000 objects. You talk about uh, people applying for time. You obviously apply for time on the WHT now. Sometimes things go wrong, sometimes the weather goes wrong. Have you ever had that experience of having applied for precious time on a telescope like the WHT and then had it wiped out when you got there? Yes, many, many times. It's really soul destroying actually when that happens. You put so much effort into writing the proposal, arranging your trip, getting out there, it's always tiring, and then finally you're there and the weather is bad. Well, they get cluttered out and you go home with no data. And you'll have to next year send again a proposal saying, you got, well, I got my project approved. Why don't you approve it again this year? But the panel may have changed. Or there may be better proposals, so the competition may be stiffer. So, you're not guaranteed. 
The worst one I've ever had was I had a five night run on a telescope in Australia called the Anglo-Australian Telescope and that's obviously a long way to go from, from Britain and got there and it poured with rain. There wasn't even a hope that it was going to be clear. It was quite, quite obviously a terrible storm that had passed over the whole country and five nights of rain and then I came home and I had nothing to show for it at all. So that was, that, that happens in astronomy and um, now, the, the way around it is to build your telescopes at better and better places, which are less likely to suffer from such catastrophic uh, loss of time. And so, so that's why, for example, now we have telescopes in Chile where it, it, it hardly ever rains. Uh, it, it's a once in every few year event. So we've had a really brief visit here in the William Herschel telescope, but we have to go because they're madly getting things ready for tonight. Because tonight there are three things happening in space they can only observe tonight. One of them is a gamma ray burst that has just recently gone off. There's also a recent type 1A supernova, the most important type of supernova, so they don't want to miss that. And also an extrasolar transit. It's actually a secondary transit where a planet is going around behind another star and they're going to be trying to observe that. So there's a lot happening here tonight. The William Herschel telescope is going to be very busy looking at things that can only look at tonight and they don't want me hanging around with my camera and they want to switch the lights off. So let's get out of here. Thanks Javier. You're at the moment it's the central the core of it, just this faint fuzzy Not white area in the middle. This and other stuff you see here is probably light like illusion. Now things won't like like make it into becoming real stars. Think. At the heart of this is a very young star. So, um, Nick, I'm so excited to have 